Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this image. This image shows the moment of impact between a raspberry and some cream. It was captured at just the right place in time with the aid of a Myops Smart Plus trigger. Then a very short duration burst of studio flash effectively froze the motion within the picture. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. Now one of the problems with this sort of photography is knowing exactly when to trigger the camera. And you can make that quite a lot easier by using an automatic trigger. This is the uh, Myops Smart Plus trigger, which was sent to me by the manufacturers. Uh, and it's a very nice self-contained little unit. Uh, and with all these things these days, uh, it does come with an app, but you can actually set the whole thing up on the screen on the unit itself. So just by uh, pressing this button, I can run through all the different ways that this can be triggered. Now I'll be using the um, laser trigger, and I'm going to set this up in a particular way. OK, so I'm going to set it up so that when a laser beam uh, is broken, this will then trigger the camera. And I'm going to use uh, this very small laser pointer uh, to produce the laser like so. I'm going to mount all the various bits on this uh, arm of this C-stand. By doing it this way, it means that I can be much more precise uh, with where the laser is pointing and it won't be pointing at the camera. I can mount this uh, on uh, a head. I've got a very small little ball head here, uh, which I'm going to mount on the, uh, on the arm here and put the trigger on the top of that. Let's just do that. So we'll just slide this on here. Tighten that up. I'll just screw the... It comes with a handy mounting on the bottom here. So I can just screw that onto the bottom of the trigger. Just tighten that up. And now by using the head, I can align all the various uh, parts of it. So there we go, something like that for now anyway. Uh, and then the torch, I'm just going to put in this clamp. So there we go, pop that in there. And for now, I'll put this at the other end, something like that. There we go. Right. And then in the centre, I'm just going to put this uh, as an aiming tube. We'll come back to that in a bit. I'll just pop it on for now, like that. Now, by putting everything on this arm, it means that the whole lot, the arm itself might not be very rigid, but these parts are very rigid against each other. So it makes it very easy to set the whole thing up. So the next thing to do would be to uh, set up the trigger and the laser. So I'll just turn the laser on, like so. And if I spin this round to the camera like this, you should be able to see where the laser beam is pointing. It's just pointing on the end here. So what I can do is just move this until it's pointing into the trigger, like that. Now, to help you with this, um, you can actually just go to the app uh, on your phone. So if I just start up that, and it will start searching for devices. So I'll just turn the device on, like so. There we are, and it's found the device. And it comes with all sorts of different modes. Uh, so the mode that I want is the device sensor modes. So I'll just go to laser. OK, and it's giving me a display here, uh, which is showing that um, the laser is active. So if I just put my hand in the way, you'll see that um, all the bars drop off. And I'll bring that back again, and they all come back on again. So that's working fine. Uh, and, as it says, you can set the threshold. Um, so the threshold is set to 20 at the moment. 
and I can increase that. Like so. Let's check that. There we go. So that is uh, a very solid uh, result. Now you can also set a few other things in the app, uh, one of which is the uh, delay. So if I uh, just click on this, for instance, uh, and we'll just set that to zero for the time being, like so. Uh, and the number of frames. Now I only want to take one frame, so I'm quite happy with that in uh, in that position as it is at the moment. OK, so that's it for the app for the moment. So I'll just close that down. So the other thing that I just want to set up on here is my aiming tube. Um, so if I just bring this up, the idea being that I get this in such a position so that uh, the end of it here uh, is interrupting the laser, like so. And then I know that anything that I place on the top of here um, will also interrupt the laser. I'll come back to that in a moment. So I'll just lower that out of the way. Now this may seem a very elaborate way of doing this, um, but it's actually uh, quite a lot simpler than uh, trying to trigger the camera manually yourself. OK, so the only other thing is just to plug the uh, trigger cable uh, into the side of the unit here. Uh, now these are uh, made specifically for different camera makes. Uh, this one is for Canon cameras. Uh, you can get them for all the popular makes of, of camera. Uh, but it is a little short. They're designed so that this is mounted on the top of the camera, really. Uh, but in this case, we haven't done that. So the solution is to use an extension cable. Uh, and this is just a, a commercially available um, two meter uh, 2.5 millimeter stereo extension cable. So I'll just plug that into the end of the trigger cable, like so, and the other end can go into the trigger unit itself. Like that. Right, so as far as the actual uh, triggering device is concerned, uh, that is all set up. It's not in the right place and we haven't got a subject yet, but we'll come back to this a bit later. So next thing would be the camera. And as usual, I'm using this uh, full-frame digital SLR, um, which is tethered into Capture One software. Uh, and also on the top here, I have this flash sync trigger. So the camera itself will be triggered via the MyUps Smart Plus camera trigger. Uh, and this will trigger all the uh, flashes from the camera. Uh, on the front of the camera, I have a fairly standard 24 to 70 zoom lens. So we'll just pop this on this tripod. Like that. And then the trigger remote can go into the camera like that. OK, so the next thing would be uh, a subject. OK, so I'm just going to place this uh, small glass bowl just in the middle of this piece of um, glossy perspex. And this will uh, eventually have some cream in it, and this will be what I'll be dropping the raspberries into. OK. So with that in something like uh, position, um, we just need to think about uh, some lights. Uh, so the way I want to light this uh, is to basically um, flood in this direction and yet still have some form of uh, modeling in this direction. And the way to do that is to use uh, a softbox such as this. So what I'm going to do is just move this in to the side here, so it's directly opposite the bowl on the table. Yeah, that's about right. Now, because I want a, a symmetrical image, I'm going to put another one of these at this side about here. Now, both these um, softboxes uh, have uh, a flash head 
on them. This is a uh, pack system, so this is the Pro 10 pack from um, Profoto. So I'll just plug that into the pack. Like so, okay, so before I actually go any further, what I want to do is just grab a test image just to make sure that I've got no contamination from the house lights. So, uh, first thing to do would be just to uh, set the camera up. So I'll just look through the viewfinder. So we'll just focus that up, like so. And now I'll zoom it in, like that. OK, so I'll just move the glass into the middle of the frame, like that. Good. OK, so the next thing to do would be to turn the camera on, like so. And we'll just have a look and see what settings we've got. So it's full manual mode. 1 250th of a second is the shutter speed. Uh, so that's the flash sync speed for this camera. Um, ISO 100. And I'm going to be using F8. So just with these settings, I'll just grab an image. There we go. So with no flash, we've got virtually no image. There's a few tiny little highlights in there but nothing to speak of. OK, now 1 250th of a second isn't a particularly um, fast shutter speed. So that's not going to um, stop the motion. What will stop the motion is the uh, flash and the flash duration. By making that very, very short, that will stop the motion um, completely. Now, the uh, Myops uh, Smart Plus is capable of triggering the flashes directly. But if you use it in that mode, it means you've got to do everything in the dark uh, because you have to have the shutter open all the time and then trigger uh, the flashes. By doing it this way, we're triggering the camera, which means that you can leave the lights on, which makes it a lot easier to set up the shot. OK, so with all that done, um, next thing to do would be just to have a look at what I've got set up round the back here. Uh, I have a background roll uh, of some grey paper. And just down here, I have a uh, Profoto D2 uh, flash head, which is going to be uh, just making a glow in the centre here. So it's just going to add a little bit of background interest. Uh, now, in order to set all this up, what I'm going to do uh, is just uh, remotely turn this head on and we will grab a test image just to see what we get. So if I now turn that on, turn the head on, we'll just grab a test image. OK, so we can see from that that it's sort of getting there. Um, you can also see, actually, this is the reason that I don't tend to use background paper very much, uh, because it's uh, prone to wrinkle, and you can see all the wrinkles that are actually on there. Uh, but by the time we've set this up properly, um, you should no longer be able to detect that. OK, so the next thing to do would be just to add a small snoot uh, to that head and a red gel to give it some colour. So I'll just pop the snoot on like that. And we'll just pop a red gel in front of it. There. I'll give that another go. OK, so that seems to have worked. Uh, and also now, that's about the right sort of density, uh, I think. So the next thing to do would be to set up the foreground lights, these ones. Uh, so I'll just select this pack on the floor here. And just at an arbitrary energy level, um, I'll take a test image of that. OK, there we go. So that doesn't look too bad. Let's just um, check with the exposure warning. Possibly a little bright. Uh, I might just take one stop off that, uh, just to see what difference that makes. There we are, that's a bit better. 
I think at this stage that's about the right sort of density. Okay, so the next thing to do will be to um, set up the rest of this trigger. So now I have the subject in the right place, what I can do is just swing this into something like uh, the correct position. Okay, so we'll just turn this over and raise it up to about the right sort of level. So now, if I just use uh, this raspberry, so before putting any cream in anything and before I make a mess, basically, what I will do is just make sure everything is lined up properly. So I'll just hold this on the bottom of the aiming tube and we'll just drop it in the bowl. There we go. So that was triggering the camera via the Myops Smart Trigger. But you can see in the image that the raspberry is actually ended up in the bowl, which is not really where we want it. Now, I'm using uh, a fairly standard uh, digital SLR, which has a mirror. Uh, and because the mirror is mechanical, it takes time for that mirror to come out of the way. So what you can do to uh, make the connection here a bit more instant is to lock the mirror up. So I can do that through the software here. So if I just come down to mirror lockup and change that to press twice to shoot. So now what will happen the first time I operate the shutter, I'll just do it on the camera, um, it will just lock the mirror up. It won't actually take a picture, like so. Uh, and then the second time this is triggered, it will take a picture, like so. Okay, so with na that now in place, I'll lock the mirror up, and we'll drop the raspberry once again. There we go, so now it looks like the raspberry is hovering above the bowl. It's actually moving down towards it. Uh, and if I just zoom in a little, you should be able to see that although this is all sharp, the raspberry itself is a little soft. Now that is due to the duration of the flash. So what I'm going to do is just change the mode of operation on this flash pack from normal to freeze mode. So what that will do is decrease the duration of the flash to its bare minimum. Uh, it does have a bit of a side effect, uh, and that is you will get a tiny bit of a colour shift, but that's easily corrected for. OK, so with that now in this uh, new mode, what we'll do is set the camera again. So I'll grab the raspberry. We'll just uh, lock the mirror up. And now drop the raspberry. There, and you can see in this one that that is much, much sharper. Um, so this is what we had before. And this is what we've got now. And you can also see that the two images are at more or less the same height above the bowl. I just zoom out to uh, full frame. There you go. So we're getting quite a lot of uh, consistency there. You should also see that there is a slight colour shift. This has gone ever so slightly blue. But really, I don't think I'm that bothered about that. OK, so the next thing to do would be a little bit of fine-tuning. Uh, what we actually want is the strawberry to be in the cream. Uh, so in order to do that, I need to introduce a delay. Now that is best done on the, um, on the app on the phone. So using the app, go to Laser. I'll just go to Delay. Uh, now, initially, I'll just put in, um, what, 10 milliseconds? Just like that. OK. Now, with that delay in place, we'll have another go. So, 
Trigger the shutter to lock the mirror up and drop the raspberry. Okay, so that's got a bit closer. You can see that it's now quite a lot closer to the bowl. But I think we need a bit more delay. So I'll just use the app to change the delay to 20 milliseconds. There. So this time it's gone into the bowl. Okay, so with that now set, it just remains to uh, put some cream in the bowl and go for a real take. But before we do any of that, one of the first things to do is to just grab a blank slate. Uh, this will be the last opportunity you're going to get before the whole place gets covered in cream. Um, so what I will do is just grab an image uh, just of the bowl where it is without anything in it, like that. Okay, so now I've put some uh, cream in the bowl, uh, and again I'll just grab a, a blank slate, just with that on its own. Okay, so time to do it for real. So grab the raspberry, lock the mirror up, Okay, so that's our first attempt, and you can see that uh, the raspberry has ended up in the cream, but we haven't got very much of a splash. So I'll just fish it out, and we'll have another go. Okay, so that seems to have worked uh, very well. We've got a really good splash there. Uh, obviously, there's an awful lot of mess, um, but that's the point really. Uh, so I'll just carry on, we'll maybe take one or two more. Okay, I think I've got uh, enough images there uh, to be going on with. Fantastic. Okay, so now with all that captured, the next thing to do is just to go into Photoshop and do the post-production. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up uh, two of the variants that we caught earlier. Uh, so there's this one, which is uh, the splash, uh, and this one, which is the blank slate with the hovering raspberry. Okay, so first thing to do would be just to make a stack of those two images. So just go to File, come down to Scripts, load files into Stack, Add open files, and off we go. There we go, and now Photoshop has made me a stack of those two images. Uh, so this is the first layer, and this is the base layer. Okay, so with those both turned on, and the top layer selected, I'm just going to change the blending mode from normal to lighter colour which will then bring in the raspberry from the layer below. OK, so it just remains to add a mask to this, so I can mask out all the bits that I don't want. So I'll just add a mask on there. So make sure that black is the foreground colour. Uh, go to Paintbrush. I'm going to make that a bit bigger and a lot softer to start with. go and I'll just to start with just move along the horizon line like that, just cleaning up everything on the base now I can actually go right into the glass which will reveal the glass from the other image which can look quite nice I think like so and then just carry on taking out all of the spilled cream from before, like that. 
There we are, and I'll just go down the edge here, just with a bigger brush, just to clean that up a little bit. Like that. And the other side too. There. Excellent. Uh, now there are probably one or two very small bits that um, I don't need at the top here, so again I'll just change the size of the, the brush. We'll just sweep across the very top like that, just to clean that up a little. And there we go. So it just remains to um, pick a crop. Now mine is destined for video, uh, but just choose a crop that will suit your image. Uh, and I think at this point I will just use the opportunity just to straighten it up ever so slightly. It looks as though it's leaning to me, so just using the straighten command. Just put that down the centre. Like that. There we are. bring the edges in a tiny bit and take the whole lot up in the image I think. There, that's worked very well. Click on OK and there we have it. Now I think that was a lot easier with a little bit of automation than it would have been without it. It would have taken very many more attempts to get to this point. So I think overall that has worked very well. OK, well I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.